Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. This is the Wilson Audio Extra. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. This is my second channel where I put shorter, less detailed videos, um, really just some extras that I throw in. So make sure you subscribe because this is um, you know more content coming for you all the time. Today we're going to look at a Soundstream 10.2, but before we do that, let's talk about the 10.0. We've already shown a video on the Reference Class A 10.0. And I'll have a link in the video description so you can go check that out. But let's move forward to 1998 and talk about the Soundstream Rubicon Class A 10.2. You can see here, second one listed 1,000 watts total power, rated 25 times 2 at 4 ohms, and a retail price of $889. One quarter ohm stable, according to this. And here's a look at the amp. You can see the 80 amp fuse there, the 12 volt ground and remote. It does accept four gauge for power and ground. There's also a high current or high power LED. And on this amp, the Rubicon amp, it switches automatically. It doesn't give you the option of choosing it yourself. Then you can see the speaker output. This is a stereo amplifier, left and right channels. You can also bridge it. And there's also uh, clip LEDs there as well on the top. When we move over to the right, you'll see the inputs, which includes a balance input as well as a standard RCA input, the level controls for left and right channel, and then we have this Hawking's bass control. This allows us to switch between 13 and 30 hertz, and also to control 0 to plus 9 dB between 30 and 70 hertz. Now, if you want to use the balanced input, Soundstream sold a balance line transmitter at the time, which would give you the ability to do this. This amp is part of the Cheater Amp series, which rated 25 watts by 2 at 4 ohms up to 1,000 by 1 at half ohm bridged or quarter ohm stereo. Now let's try it out. Starting off at 8 ohms on the amp dyno, certified test up to 1% THD. We are using a 1 kilohertz tone. And you can see 163 watts, so well above that rated power of 50 watts bridged at 8 ohms. Next, we'll try the 4 ohm certified run. Let's see, we get here 304 watts. The amp is rated 200 watts by one bridge. We pulled 39.3 amps. Wasting no time going straight to the two ohms bridge mono where the amp is rated 500 watts. Let's try that certified test first to 1% THD. Again, using the one kilohertz tone. And we got 599, almost 600 watts at 14 point five volts and as far as current pull 79.8 now two ohm uncertified up to clipping at one kilohertz don't you love the way you used to do those little displays there written handwritten the reason i did that is so that i could remember after i looked at the clips uh, 623 watts uncertified pulling 86.1 amps and again it's got an 80 amp fuse in there so uh, you're gonna see something even more impressive here coming up. Dynamic sends a dynamic tone. Again, this is a one kilohertz tone at 14.4. This is the IHF certified test showing dynamic power. This amp does not have that much dynamic power, 623, which exactly was what we had at clipping. Now the certified run at one ohm, this is where it's rated a thousand watts. And yes, 1172 watts at 14.4 volts. This amp was underrated. Check that out. 178.7 coming out of an 80 amp fuse. Well, it even gets better than that. On the uncertified test, we ran it up to the clipping point. And look at this, 1247 watts at 13.67. Again, this is a 50 watt amp according to the old school rating days. 206.8 amps through an 80 amp fuse. And how, you might ask, how does that even work? Well, the way it works is the 80 amp fuse does allow much more than 80 amps to go through. It's just amount of time period. So if you would have left that 208 amps for any time period, it would have uh, blown the fuse. Dynamically, we got 661 at 14.1, which was interesting. We're gonna show something here in a minute 
to kind of further explain that. Here's a, all the ratings. You're welcome to pause this if you want to see. But basically, we got ratings across the board plus more on the certified tests and all the other ones except for the dynamic at 1 ohm. All right, I'm going to show you something interesting here on the Soundstream Class A 10.2. You can see the red light is on right now. It's set to the high power mode, and there's no way to really change it. This amp auto switches from high current to high power, or high power to high current. So what I'm going to do is do a 1 ohm dynamic test on the dyno and show you what it does. Now see that's a lot lower than expected because certified we got over 1100 watts. So what's going on? Well what I found out is that the amp is automatically switching to the high current mode where it's rated to do 500 watts and I'm assuming it's doing that to protect the power supply because it's noticing some massive surges of current saying hey we better put the amp you know we better protect the amp here and lower the rail voltage so that's what I believe it's doing sound stream reference class A 10.2 smarter than the average amp So as you can see, as you can hear, maybe the amp did thump pretty well to the four Power Series Rockford 12 inch subs. Now let's take some of these screws out of the bottom so that we can take a closer look, find out what's inside. So we have all the screws removed. Let's go ahead and pull this panel up so we can gander at the beautiful red circuit board here. And you may be wondering, this amp looks a lot different than a lot of other amplifiers, mainly because the transistors are squished between the circuit board and the heat sink. Now, there's some amps that have done this over the years, but not a whole lot. And I've had some comments from some other amp designers saying this is a, you know, this may not be the best idea for servicing, but it is a good way uh, to dissipate heat. And on the left here, we have the Class A 10.0. Just want to kind of show you comparison between the two. And I'm going to point out a couple things that I noticed. Again, I'm not an amplifier design expert by any means, but I can kind of use my eyes to point out things. Um, the layout seems to be pretty similar between the two. And then check out the uh, transformer. It looks like the 10.2 is considerably beefier than the 10.0 and just to let everybody know if you have a 5.2 rubicon please let me know i'm looking to get one for future tests till next time this big d i'm out of here all right now we're going to try the bass song i created dynamically on the dyno at one ohm see what kind of power we get Okay, again, the amp is switched to the high current mode from the high power mode. So it does it with music too. Interesting. 730 watts, 14.2 volts. Here we go, slow motion. Tried to lose my phone. <laughs> what? <laughs>